let's uh, speak. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and and he needs screen sharing too, right? Is that? It looks that like I have that option. Okay, okay, okay. And can everyone hear me okay? We sure can. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll get started unless there are any other um, housekeeping things you want needed to mention, David. No, that's good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as David mentioned, this is going to be a sort of a case study, a little bit of demo, but mostly case study of uh, my first theme migration. Um, going to my background a little bit on a little bit of history, but first I just wanted to say that. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, I picked my original theme in 2018, and I'll give you a little overview of what that was. And, um, and then just literally wrapping up a few days ago, spent about two weeks migrating it to Cadence theme and Cadence blocks. And I'm going to skim, skim the surface on a lot of topics. I don't plan to go deep on too many of them, uh, but if you do have questions on anything, you know, we can sort of slow down and maybe get into more detail and feel free to ask questions as I go along. Um, this is not going to be a demo of Cadence blocks, I mean, or of the Cadence ecosystem per se, although we're certainly going to be seeing some of it. Um, and then there are a few parts along the way where I had some hiccups uh, because I was also moving from a managed WordPress on my host to standard WordPress, and that introduced some complications. Uh, but I'm probably just going to mention that stuff in passing and not go into detail unless it turns out to be of interest to anyone. Um, and yeah, otherwise, I think I am ready to get started. So let me share my screen. Yeah, you should uh, be able to share it. Yeah, ho hopefully you can. Uh, I'll see that now. Are you guys, can you guys see my screen? Sure can. All right, I'm just rearranging some windows on my second monitor. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanted to mention is that a few days uh, after I finished the project, I got an email from Cadence that they were holding a, a, a two-day boot camp. So this was all after I was done. Um, I was able to figure out, you know, most everything in Cadence just by trial and error. I think maybe less than a handful of times I had to Google something to sort of figure something out, but mostly it was just, you know, jump in and, and try things out. Um, but I will say that the bootcamp videos are very good if you haven't used Cadence, and it definitely would have been helpful if like I had seen them before the project. So that's uh, what I have up here. Um, they have, they had two days and they had um, kind of the first three videos are someone from iThemes training, I think. Um, just going through um, sort of a, a fresh install and then getting into their um, design templates, customizing them. And then like the last video was the, the founder and main developer, Ben Rittner, sort of talking about what's coming. So if you do want to dig more into Cadence and kind of get a bit of a crash course intro demo, um, then uh, I highly recommend these. And let me stick this in the chat. If I can find my chat control. All right, so I put that in the chat. Um, so a little bit about my background. Um, so I basically learned HTML, JavaScript, a little bit of Perl and PHP during the uh, leading into the original internet boom. And, um, and that led me to, uh, and I was doing that just to, uh, because I was involved in some creative projects and, and this new internet web thing had come along and it seemed like a good way to publicize some of them. Um, but that led me into a 20 year career or nearly 20 year career in software engineering. So I, I became an OO programmer. I was still mostly focused though on uh, basically web apps and mostly the front end and the middle tier. And I did, you know, as a coder and manager for about 10 years. And then for about the last eight years of my career, I was more at a manager or director level and wasn't, wasn't coding anymore. So I do have a technical background, but I really approached this project um, more as a content creator. So uh, I guess I'll get into that when I, let me show you sort of where we started. Um, so in the late nineties or early two thousands, I, started this domain emusements.com. And originally it was for sort of a mix of some web games that back in the, you know, when everyone was trying to create internet companies. 
um, that I was running with a friend and it was sort of an umbrella site for that stuff. Then when I got into doing this professionally, it kind of atrophied for close to, you know, 15 plus years. And I was sort of stuck on uh, late 90s, early 2000s design and code. So I'm going to, we're going to go to the Wayback Machine now. And this is the starting state uh, when, um, after I left my tech career and moved to the Bay Area, I mean, moved from the Bay Area to here and had some time. I was like, well, I either need to take down this website or I need to like reboot it, figure out what it's going to be. And this was just an HTML JavaScript. And there might be a, some PHP, a little bit of PHP or Perl in here, probably not anymore. There was a contact form at some point. Um, and I decided I was going to start blogging and I just rebuilt. I wanted to learn WordPress. So I decided I would learn WordPress. Uh, and this is the way back uh, machine web archive, in case you haven't figured that out. Um, the, um, so I decided that I would sort of, th this site here did have a little microsite. Um, just click through to that, that had sort of my creative portfolio and resume. And um, I decided I'd rebuild this whole thing and sort of relaunch it on WordPress with the intention to start blogging and also to sort of house my creative portfolio and I'd keep the amusements domain because it had been around so long. Um, so let's see. So when I started getting into WordPress, I probably watched a few videos, went through a lot of web tutorials. Um, uh, so I, the first thing is, of course, picking a theme. I wanted to do everything free to start because I didn't know what I was doing and free forever if possible. You know, so I went through different sites that had surveys of free themes and, you know, found one that seemed reasonably good. So this Ascendant is a child theme of, um, uh, of, a, of, a, of Allegiant. And um, you just see, you can see, oh, that's funny because that worked uh, just the other day. <laughs> um, anyway, so we'll, uh, you can just see it here in the screenshot, but, and you'll see my site that I built off of it. So this was a free theme. It had reasonable feature set, at least by 2018 standards for, uh, um, you know, getting, getting me started. And I did customize the design quite a bit. Um, I did start, um, so let me do this. Um, let me jump to, um, where are we going? Yeah, let's go here. So this is a, a subdomain that's um, now behind a password. Um, it's sort of my, so it's just sort of my legacy uh, site. So I can still, um, I can still reference it if in case, I, you know, I need to go back and check something compared to how I'm doing things now. Um, so this, um, of course, the edit links are here because I'm actually signed in. Those wouldn't be there. But this, this was built on the Allegiant theme. Um, so this was, you know, sort of up till three weeks ago or whatever was my, or a couple of weeks ago was, was my live site. Um, this section at the top, I just want to call out because it's, it's built into the theme. It's this features section you can turn on and off. And one of the things that they didn't allow you to do in the free version is make this whole thing hot clickable. So that's why I had to add these links here because I don't want to pay for the theme to so you could click anywhere. Otherwise, I would not have included those. And you'll see how that's changed in the new site. Um, so I'm not going to do a full tour here, but I came up with this green gradient. If um, if you go to most of the sub pages, it sort of repeats this theme. Um, I think. Uh, well, I can't show you the demo anymore, but um, that theme, you know, has this big bar at the top. I just customized it with the gradient, and um, show you the blog. Blog, I, I didn't have that, it was just the blog under the header. And then if you go to uh, one of the specific pages that brought back the header and had a, a, bread, a breadcrumb. Um, and then, so let me go back to my notes, see what I wanted to call out here. Um, so I started on the classic editor, but probably within the first six months, I switched over and migrated almost all the code um, on, um, on the site to the block editor when I was getting more familiar with that and it was clear it was the direction of WordPress. Um, and this site ended up being a hodgepodge of 
different formatting tools um, that sort of evolved over time. Um, and my philosophy going in was I, uh, so cir circling, circling back for a second. So I'm approaching this site, it's my personal site, I've launched one other word press site since, um, as a content creator. So my goal was, even though I have a background as a web developer, I don't wanna deal with code. I don't wanna code, I don't wanna get into the inners. I was doing managed WordPress, so I couldn't even get hack PHP if I wanted to. Um, and I wanted to get something set up where I could go write blog posts and you know, and, and list out my resume and portfolio and all that. So, so that guided, has guided my philosophy for both the original project and the, the new one. And so my, and I did have several places on the original site where I'd put um, HTML blocks in and have custom HTML, but I tried to avoid that. It's just that I was frustrated in certain places by the lack of precise formatting I could get with, uh, with the theme, with the theme and the Gutenberg blocks, and even with some of the, these plugins, I'm about to tell you about that I was using. Um, so, I will, I guess, show you the plugins page. I'm going to go go over an overview at the end of the um, sort of a, a side by side. What were the plugins on the old and what were in the new um, at the end? But what I wanted to call out here is that. For formatting, I was using the CPO companion, which was a companion plug uh, companion plugin to the theme I was using that gave a bunch of short codes. And like, for example, the uh, this sort of green box was, uh, I think I'd done with that with one of their short codes. That was the main thing I was using that for. Um, then there's um, short codes. This was before I got more into blocks. Um, where is it? Short, short codes ultimate. Um, I thought I, I had that open. Yeah. So let me close ascendant. So short codes ultimate is actually a really cool short codes library. I wouldn't use it today on the block world, but it gives you kind of like these block libraries. It gives you a whole bunch of free, um, you know, formatting patterns that um, you drop in with short codes and um, most of them are free. And then I don't know if they call out the, um, there is a pro version. There's probably a compare page, but so that was a big, you know, part of what I was doing, for example, on, um, let's see, I, oh, no, not that one. So here, like these tabs, I wasn't really happy with the way I got them formatted with some CSS, but these tabs are done with the short codes, um, uh, uh, their tab short code. And then um, ultimate blocks was sort of my first foray into um, into using a block library instead. So I was trying to move in this direction and phase out the use of the short codes. And these I was mostly using for these, uh, um, that the sort of color boxes, table of contents. So if you go to my TV review page, here's a table of contents, jumps you down to the um, content. Um, and uh, styled lists. You know, like icon type lists and a few other things, probably. Then I also had um, Font Awesome, so I could mix in icon, Font Awesome, you know, sort of symbols where I wanted to. And then a few places where I used custom HTML. So that's sort of the overview of the starting point before I move into sort of the upgrade project. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Um, so my first um, attempt at, uh, or when I got started on building the new site, I decided I was going to use Dev Kinsta. So I know many people here are familiar with local, or used to be, I guess, local by Flywheel. David has demoed it before. Um, around the time uh, I was previous to that, I, the only local I had done was a program called Instant, what, Instant WP. And I don't remember exactly what technologies it uses. And I, I have a PC. I think it might have been also on the Mac, but it used, you know, probably used, I think it might have, um, it might have just packaged things together in an easy way where it was running natively on your machine, or it may have even been using like a virtual box under the hood. I'm not sure, but I don't remember. Um, but around the time I thought, okay, I'll, next time I try local development, I'll use local by flywheel. I read this post from Dev Kinsta, I mean, about Dev Kinsta, which is, a local development tool by Kinsta, which is, um, I guess, a well-known uh, WordPress host. 
So they do, I guess, similar to local YP. If you can use, anyone can use DevKinsta for free. I'm about to show it. Um, if you happen to host on Kinsta, which I don't, then they have all the sort of direct conduits baked in where you can push your sites, you know, very easily to production. Um, so I will, because I know at least David was curious about that, I will pop that open right now. Um, let me just find my, reposition my windows. So I'm going to, what you're going to see is I'm going to open Dev Kinsta, and then you're going to see it's going to open Docker and it's going to wait for Docker to um, get all the virtual machines running. Um, and then, then, then I'll be able to go in for a minute. Um, so while we're waiting on that, um, so it does use Docker under the hood, which is like an enterprise grade um, sort of virtual container program. It's sort of like a virtual box, except that virtual box or virtual machines are usually one computer, whereas Docker is more like it can contain, it can create containers that contain an ecosystem, like a database, a web server, a mail server, whatever, and sort of package them all together. So a lot of enterprise software companies use it to actually deploy on AWS and or wherever they're hosting, they use it to sort of create their uh, production environments or, or development environments. Um, I'm not really a Docker expert, but that's the best way I can explain it. So here's Docker. When I installed Dev Kinsta, um, it created all these different containers for me. Um, so I didn't have to do anything directly in Docker other than make sure I had it installed. Um, this is now, now I can interact with Dev Kinsta. Um, I will just mention in passing that um, this should have taken about five to 10 minutes at most to sort of install and get to this point or with a you know ad site and a fresh WordPress install. But I did go through a lot of hiccups and complications with um, uh, Docker basically not thinking I had a new enough chip. I'm on about a five-year-old Intel i7 core. Um, it didn't think I had the virtualization technology, which I clearly did from all my research. Um, the Hyper-V or whatever it is. So um, anyway, I eventually sorted it out, but it was like a major headache that required a lot of research and pounding my head. And, and so I, most likely nobody here would run into that, but I, I, I thought if you're on a Mac or even if you're on a PC, you probably didn't have your machine configured with this weird thing I had that, that confounded things. And once I sorted that out, it was all great. I just wanted to mention them in passing in case uh, anyone ever tried it on a Windows machine. And, maybe ran into a problem. Just, just look over very carefully on the requirements on the DevKinsta site and, and or the Docker site. They'll spell out pretty clearly like your chip, you need to have such and such OS and um, a chip that uh, supports this. And um, it's pretty easy to figure out. So what I'm gonna do, and I, I, I only developed up to a point on DevKinsta because it was just too slow. Um, so I will open the site. And you're going to see we're going to wait probably at least 10 minutes. I mean, 10, not 10 minutes, 10 seconds. All right, so there we go there. And then um, so this is just running locally on my machine. I could open Windows Explorer and show you where the WordPress files are. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'll sign in. That's annoying. Let me let me get through this. This is from WordFence. In case uh, if anyone has not set up two-factor authentication on uh, their WordPress site, there are multiple ways to do it, um, or different plugins and options. I happen to use WordFence, and I uh, highly recommend protecting your site that way. So let me get the code. So you can see it's uh, it's chugging along. It's not particularly fast. I'll just get to the point where I like open, go into and uh, edit a page or let you know the page editor open just so you can see the performance. And then we'll move. To, then I'll pause for questions on DevKinsta. So go to pages. Waiting, 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 and then. Um, Again, waiting, waiting, waiting. 
and then this is the other thing. So once I'm in here, I think, you know, the, it didn't feel too slow just working on the browser, but as um, I'm assuming mostly going to be based on your browser at your computer on the browser, not on anything to do with dev Kinsta. But what started to drive me crazy was this. On, on my host, this sometimes, it can take a few seconds, but often within one second, boom, I've got the preview. So, so I developed, what I did on DevKinsta is I basically installed fresh WordPress. I forgot to mention, I, I use Updraft Plus for my backups and exports and imports. So I have the premium version. Um, you can do, I know there's the, um, I forget the name. There's one David has shown that I know is popular and even my host was talking about. Um, so there are free options, but uh, for some various bells and whistles, I use Updraft Plus. Um, it's it's able to store uh, my backups to uh, OneDrive, and you know over off to the cloud, whatever cloud of my choosing, and um, you can either the free version is pretty powerful with the you can buy like one off plugins like initially I just bought, bought one that was called Migrator that it unlocks the migrate part where it'll rewrite your database when you import a site for the URLs um, or if you buy the premium you get sort of everything unlocked so. When I came to DevKinsta, and as you'll see later, what I did when I um, started developing on my host is um, I just took a backup of my production site and migrated it into a fresh install of WordPress. And um, that's how I got all the content um, into the local host and later my, ho my real host. Um, so I was going to mention one or two things. What was it? Um, Oh yeah, so what I did here uh, before I gave up is I installed the Cadence plugin, uh, the theme and plugin. Well, first just the theme, played around with the theme, got a feel for it and said, yeah, this is super powerful and looks like it'll, it's going to work. And the other thing about the theme, I think I have it here somewhere. Um, so the theme, I think I was going to show this later, but I'll just show it now. Um, so you can see the... If you look at my existing design and then look at the default theme, it's already pretty similar. I mean, of course, all sites are somewhat similar, but notably it has the big sort of band at the top. And um, so playing around with the theme and seeing the, the amount of power and configuration in the theme, and I just have the free version, is like literally you know, orders of magnitude more sophisticated than the theme I was using gives you so much configurability and um, customization, um, easy to use. Then I installed the blocks, saw how those worked, and clearly they had replacements for all the different short codes and previous formatting tools I was using. Um, so I got to the point, uh, you can see where I had, um, where, where'd it go? Uh, no, uh, no, the, I thought I had opened, yes, here. I, and I had sort of a draft of a home page. Um, I, I basically put a stake in the ground, but I said, okay, this is taking too long to develop. So I think, I don't remember if that point I exported what I'd done so far. And then, no, I think I actually just started, okay, oh, let me, let me, I'll get to that in a second. So, but I basically got to the point where it's too slow to develop in DevKinst and I moved on to the next phase of the project. So before I get into that, I'll pause just to see if there are any questions so far. Okay. Um, um, so, so, yeah. so just to add, you, you had mentioned Updraft. Um, the, the one I had talked about was WP Vivid. No, there's, I think there was another one. And then, that, and then uh, Mark had talked about all-in-one WP migration. That, that was the one, yeah. all-in-one. Yeah. Okay. All right. I knew somebody had talked about yep. it. Um, so all-in-one WP migration, um, I, from what I saw in the demo and even my web host was pushing that, but I already had... I already had paid for this you know, years ago. So, and Updraft Plus, you know, I think it's pretty well known and regarded, but there's a lot of good solutions. Okay, so let me get back to my notes. Um, oh, the other thing that I, I did is I built out a, um, I wanted to see if I could dump my form. Um, uh, where is it? I want to see if I could um, dump my form, uh, my form builder plugin. So I, I did build out um, 
a contact form. You'll see it when I now get to the real dev site. Um, but it didn't work. It's supposed to work. The Docker container contains um, this mail hog thing. So I don't know why I didn't, since I knew I was moving off of this solution, I didn't debug that. But I think you're, I, well, I'm not sure if this is intended to be for like the WordPress notifications that, you know, get sent out, you know, say WordFence sends, sends me notifications and different plugins send me notifications. Um, or if, if this also should have worked for the contact form, but that did not work locally, didn't spend time debugging it. It worked fine on my host subdomain. So I'll get to that in a second. So I, uh, I've used that, you know, local has that mail hog thing also. And I've used it with the cadence, the, you know, just the um, cadence, you know, contact form and it yeah. works. Okay. You know, so it, there's it, all, all the mail ends up, ends up going there. It doesn't actually go to your inbox. Oh, you, 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 view your, was, okay. you view your mail in, in, in local, there's a utilities and then under the utilities, there's mail hog. And if you click on that, it shows any mail that's come out of the site. Yeah, I'm not sure the intent here <laughs> if that's how it works. Uh, maybe it is. Um, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, it might collect I, it all. In, in yeah, it could. Right. It could be that I, if yeah. I had read up on the DevKim stub um, site, that I would tell you how to go do that. But um, in any case, I didn't need to because I was I was moving off this solution due to the performance issues. So let me close up um, and just you can also get into a database manager, which I never did, and you can open your site folder. So. Um, yeah, so here, here it is, all the usual stuff. Um, Hello. Um, can you hear me? Yep. All right. So you were saying that um, you're having a lot of performance issues. Have you compared using DevKinsta on any other machine to see how much of it might have been your machine versus how much of it is the DevKinsta app? Yeah, I, I did. I, yeah, I did not. Um, my... Um, uh, David said he might try it out on his, M his M1 Mac, which would give a uh -huh. good comparison to local. So it could be my machine, but my machines, even though it's a, like a five-year-old chip, it was top of the line at the time. And it's still, for most things, even video editing, everything else, it's plenty fast. So it certainly could be that, but um, uh, I will be getting, um, I'm getting a new a new PC soon. I'm not sure I'm going to bother with DevKinster right away, but um, <laughs> but I would be able to do the test. Yeah, I'm curious, especially because you mentioned at the beginning that it was telling you it didn't have enough um, resources. No, no, it wasn't that. that. It, it, it wasn't it related was, to that. No, it wasn't that. I've got like 16 gigabytes of um, RAM and plenty of hard drive SSDs. <clears throat> it, it had more to do with um, uh, the at some time, maybe for whatever, some number of years ago, three, four years ago, I think I enabled this this new Windows sandbox thing where you could try out new software in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. And and then I forgot about it. Oh. So that was tying up the virtualization <laughs> and making everything right. think the system, everything else in the system think that, and I installed, I installed VirtualBox because that's a common culprit if you have it installed. So Docker and it basically was failing as if I didn't have virtualization as a feature on my system. So as okay. soon as I found that service and killed it, it was all mm -hmm. good. So it wasn't anything no to do with um, it wasn't anything to do with system requirements other than this fluke that it didn't recognize like the virtualization supported by the chip. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, so yes, I but there could be confounds here. I don't want to, you know, everyone else, you, your mileage may vary. It, otherwise, it seems to be a pretty slick solution. Any other questions on DevKinsta? Okay, let me quit out of that then. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so what I did is um, close this and this, and we'll come back to this, and this is where we wanna be. So what I did is I have unlimited <coughs> subdomains on my host. So as I'm sure most people do. So um, I decided I would, and I could have done this from the start if I hadn't wanted to play around with local development more. I created a subdomain, v, it was originally v3.com. 
amusements. And for reasons I won't bore you guys with, I had to create another instance. So it's now v3-1.amusements.com. And um, this was became my development site. And I basically started over. I, I hadn't done too much work actually on the other site other than playing around. And, um, and you'll see this is much faster. So let me go over my setup here. So first of all, this is not a URL that's linked anywhere or should be indexed or anything. And the other thing I did is I enabled this plugin. I don't know if anyone's played with it. It seems to be the, the main one you find when you search is um, password protected. Um, I have that one here. So this allows you um, to basically with some flexibility password protect your the end user site. So if we go to um, Yes, I can just do that in an incognito window. So I no, you can't get into the site. If you put a password in, then you get the end user experience. Um, but that's my way of sort of keeping it a sort of you know secret or somewhat hidden from the world. Um, and then I also disabled um, site kit, kit by Google because I didn't want the Google Analytics running on this site or reporting traffic to Google. Um, so this is on my host. It became my development site. I started over a fresh install WordPress. I installed the newest version of my production site, uh, or uh, migrated it, imported it from um, Updraft Plus, and started over. And I could bring up the local site side by side for the few things I just wanted to match. And I think there are a couple. Oh, no, no, that was something else. So, and as I said, I hadn't gotten that far in the other one. So it was easier to um, just sort of start over and, and do things sort of cleanly from now that I knew what I was doing. So let me see, I covered this already. Okay, so the thing with, um, one of the things with Cadence is that they give you um, these starter templates. If I was building the site from, and I should also back up and say, although I was a web developer and um, uh, you know had a web development background, I'm not a designer. I mean, I have some visual eye. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a design hacker. Anything I do is you know, just hacking something together or from someone else's template or whatever. I'm, I'm certainly not someone you would take any design project to. Can I so, this? I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Is it okay to record this? This is all being recorded, right? Oh, I was gonna, cause I wanted to press record and it said to ask you for permission. I think Aaron's already, or I think Aaron's- Yeah, it's all, it will, it'll be up on the YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Thank you. So, so um, uh, if I was starting the site from scratch, then they've got this great library here of starter templates that basically you install um, Cadence theme and then you uh, import the, and we also have to install blocks cause they're built with the blocks. And then you import a template and a few of them are pro, but most of them are free. And I think um, on the bootcamp I went to, Ben said that they're, they're dropping one a week. And um, so basically, and you can click through, um, so this is the one they were using in the bootcamp. You can click through, um, I mean, just on this page, you can click through and uh, you know, play, with it, play with any of these. And so if I was starting from, scratch and they even say these are not intended for an existing site these are these are intended for something new of course you can always go grab elements from it if you want but um but the point is if i was starting from scratch i may very well have tried to find a template you know that i could then hack that was already someone had already done a color palette and button styles and all these different things but i didn't do that because i have a pretty deep you know a lot of pages on my site and there was no way i was going to rebuild all that so, um, so my goal instead was to basically kind of recreate the existing design, but with a lot of refinements and enhancements and polish. Um, and one of the things I did, I don't have too many windows here, but yeah, this is where we want to be. Um, and this is one thing, um, I don't know if uh, many other themes have this, but um, one thing that I really like about, um, among many other things about Cadence, is it, it has, um, it uses the concept of the color palette. So all the themes, these are all like, so you choose a palette and then those become the global colors 
that are sort of the defaults in most of the cadence block and theme configuration when you're choosing colors. They're set to sort of the color palette default for whether it's a background or, a, a, you know, it's, uh, I don't know if they have the tool tip here. No, um, they don't, but it's like, it's uh, accents. Oh, it's like the link color, the link hover, like the headers, the body text are kind of the ones in the middle. And then the sort of background colors are the ones at the end. I think when you hover over them, yeah, I was trying uh, a bit on the, on, go to the ones that are actually installed, the green, your own ones. There. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Accent, Accent two. Yeah. So but those first two are like your button and your button hover. Yeah, then, you still yeah. have to kind of a little bit map out, like looking at the theme and the different elements on the page to figure yeah. out exactly what's being used where, but it gives you a pretty good idea. So, um, so I think, oh, this one, yeah, palette two. This was the default um, palette. And so what I did, since I already sort of had a color palette that was sort of my whole design is based on this gradient that goes from a light, light green to a darker green. This is the old live site. Um, so I basically, even though I, I don't know anything really too much about colors and color palettes, since I'm not a designer, but I said, well, I'll use this concept and use the shades of green in that gradient for like this stuff, the link colors and the hover and for this sort of accent color in the background here. And then I customized from what they had. Like, I think this one is pure black. Um, yeah, I like pure black for my sort of body text and then slightly lighter ones for other things. So, um, but the nice thing about using the palette then is if you do rebrand later to the extent you've left those defaults throughout the rest of the configuration of the blocks and the theme, your whole site, you know, you won't have to go monkey with colors all over the place. Of course, if there's anywhere you've gone into a configuration and said, I'm going to set it to something different than one of the default colors, like if I came up here and just clicked anywhere randomly, then that's a configuration I'm going to have to remember to change uh, separately from the palette. Um, let's see. So I did that. And I did that also to sort of help consistify the design across the site. Um, so there is a, a bit of a learning curve. I mean, you know, I this seems more robust than the other ones I've used. I mean, I already, you know, was pretty competent in all this from the other themes I've used, but there's just a lot more you can configure. And some of the confusion is sometimes like, is that setting over here in the general, you know, somewhere in here? Like there is some, there are some blog settings in here somewhere. I think a couple of things in here that like I'm gonna affect your blog page or is it back out at this level? So there is a little bit of digging around like to find where things are. But once you get into the actual, um, you know, configuration screens, you can see like there's just a ton of control that the um, plugin gives you. And, and then you can put overrides in for, um, um, for, uh, you know, for if, if you want like to tweak things that are specific to tablet or mobile, you can you can go do that to put some variants in the responsiveness. Um, so there was an initial learning curve that was mostly when I was on Dev Kinsta, um, definitely to learn the, the blocks and all the configurations. But once I got past that, then going through all my page, there were a couple of pages I redesigned or main, the main one was the home page. Um, and I'll just show you, uh, I'll jump to the, I guess, live site every once in a while. So, oh, no. so let's, uh, we're done here, done here. And, okay, so like here's, here's the live site now. So um, this was a page I rebuilt and you can, and this was using, um, I'll show this in a second, I think. This was using one of their design, um, it's their uh, info, I think it's called Infobox is the plugin, but their design library has some patterns, like kind of like the pattern library in WordPress. So I took one of theirs that was for sort of feature boxes and then tweaked it quite a bit. And there's all kinds of other, you know, you can change the color of the icon and the text and whatever you want on the rollover. I kept it pretty simple. They have a nice animation that'll like do, draw a little box or circle around your icon, but that just seemed a little too noisy for me. Um, but um, so, but other than say this page, which I did a lot of redesign on. So let me let me go back here. Um, <clears throat> so you can see some side by side. So there's the previous. 
um, and then and then here's the newer one. I stuck my photo so it's in the navigation instead of just appearing once on the home page. Um, I have um, featured po these featured posts down here that I was using. These were just hard coded, meaning I just built them with blocks and linked to them because I don't change them that much. And because at the time, or up until recently, or until Cadence, um, even using the um, the query block um, or the post block from WordPress that's relatively new. I didn't really like the way it looked and I hadn't figured out how to get it to pull the ones I wanted. Um, so this was just something I, you know, put together with blocks. Um, whereas now I'm using the post, um, uh, the post plugin or I'm sorry, post block from Cadence. And it uses the query, you know, the, the query lookup from WordPress under the hood. And I tagged the, the post that I wanted to be featured with a featured tag. And so now I'm using their, you know, the same sort of post engine here that you're going to see on the blog page, which will open in a second. So I think this is a big upgrade on, on first of all, ease of maintenance and uh, also just design from what I had before. And if you go to the blog, then you see very similar design here, um, whereas um, the one here was more like a single list. There probably was an option in my theme to uh, maybe do more of a grid, but this is what I had started with here a few years ago and stuck with, but I, 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 do, like, I do like this a bit better. Um, so let me see what I wanted to call out. Um, okay, so what I was saying is that there were a few pages that I spent a bunch of time, you know, carefully redesigning, um, but most, uh, where are we going? Here we go. But most of the um, most of the pages, I could just go through, open it up. There were a bunch of block, and then go through and figure out what I needed to swap because I needed to swap out any short code from CP, the CPO companion, any short code from short codes ultimate, and I needed to get rid of any ultimate block because that was my goal was to switch completely all that stuff over to Cadence blocks. So I basically had to go through and. Um, you know, some pages were really quick and there were just a few things to swap out. Other pages were more um, onerous, such as, um, so I'll go back here and go to here and come here. So this, this page has an overview of all the plays I produced, wrote, directed, and, wrote and directed and or produced for radio, drama, or audio theater over the years had this long list of repeating formatting. It was kind of ugly. Um, and those were all done with some short codes. So going through, and I probably could have figured out some way to take the code and do a search and replace, and maybe with some regex or something, but that was probably going to end up taking me as long as just brute forcing it. So if you look at the new site, and so this, this button is just picking up the theme palette colors, the dark color, I didn't style it, the dark color is coming and the rollovers are coming from that palette. Um, so now um, uh, these are all done using, uh, I think I used the cadence row block on this one um, and I changed the formatting up. Um, so this was the type of thing that took a long time. So there were two or three pages or posts like this that were super tedious, but for the most part going through was, um, you know, wasn't too bad on most pages, just maybe five to 10 minutes at most per page. Um, is that the core audio player? This is just, uh, yeah, this is just, um, yeah. the embed audio block and just yep. native browser HTML5. That's what I thought. Yep. Yep. Uh, I have played around in the past when I was first setting up my site and I wanted to control the look more and all that. And really I didn't find there were too many great audio player plugins and, or they came with complications or a lot of, you know, code way that's just like. So, you know, I'm not trying to do anything too fancy. The other thing I, I, that you might might have seen, this is just a WordPress playlist. So, um, you know, I didn't really have to do anything special here other than uh, build the playlist and use the word, the playlist. Uh, I think there's a playlist short code that's WordPress native. So, so, uh, so that's the, so that's the, is that the, is that the core audio player? When you say core audio player, it's just want, sticking in the, um, I think it's, uh, it's a block. It's a, you know, it's, a, yeah, it's let me, let me, um, let me go to the, um, I've never uh, used it to do the list. 
Yeah, let me go to that page so we can uh, take a look. So it's going to be here. So this is literally just the playlist short code. You don't need to embed a player or anything. You just put in playlist and, or let me, let's look at the, oh yeah, these ideas are, cause they're all, I'm, ho I'm hosting them locally cause I don't have a huge amount of traffic. So, um, and I'm not using a CDN. So for the other, all the video stuff and for other audio theater I've done, I'm using YouTube, but um, for uh, my sort of legacy stuff, the, these are just the, I think they're just like the, the media library IDs. Um, and li literally this is it. There's no player to put in, of course, um, for the <laughs> ones. Uh, so this, and then for a single, for a single, um, what you were saying where it was a single player, it's just that right. audio block. Okay. So and that short question? code thing is, is native to that, that short code that you're using there is native to WordPress. Yes. That, I think oh. that goes back a long, many years. I think it'd been around a long time or I don't know how long, but it, oh. in 2018, when I started, I think it was well established. I was surprised there's no like playlist block or anything now, but it's, I didn't see any other uh, newer way to do this. Um, I have to say, I've, I when I was looking for audio players a ways back, maybe six months or a year ago, I was surprised at how little there was yeah. out there. I yeah. was really surprised. And I looked for a while. I, I'd say the, my, the a couple of them that were really good. One, one is Sonar. Sonar with S-O-N-A-A-R, Sonar. And then another one I thought was pretty good was called Audio Igniter. Yeah, I don't think I'd tried those. those. They might be newer. Um, I d definitely didn't find, you know, again, a few years ago when I looked a lot of um, good plugins, but even if you're just looking for, say, like a jQuery library or something you're gonna drop into your site that's not necessarily a WordPress thing, there aren't like a huge number of great options. So, um, uh, and also with the browser support so much better now using the native HTML player, you're not like leaving users behind the way you would have previously. Because I had in the past used some JavaScript libraries that would put in a JavaScript player. Well, it would put in the HTML5 player if it knew the browser could support it or it'd fall back to JavaScript. But I'd, I mean, for first of all, I'm not on, I don't really care. This is just my personal site. But even I think on almost any kind of site today, you'd be hard you'd have to still be supporting like internet explorer users to probably have to worry about it too much. Yeah. Hey, uh, ask you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, Randy, uh, yeah. can you hear me? Yes. Randy, thank you. Thank you for uh, introducing uh, the team. Uh, I, I use uh, DV for the last four years and all the, uh, this uh, plugin, uh, the modules, uh, audio, video, code, all those modules and portability and uh, responsiveness. How do you uh, compare uh, Divi and uh, this? Uh, I, I haven't used Divi, but it was discussed at the last meetup. I think Divi is an older library. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if it, it and it's, it, well, I'll just talk at a high level sort of some of these page builders like Divi or Elementor kind of take you out of the WordPress sort of native experience to build the page. Whereas Cadence Blocks, you're very much just using Gutenberg Block Editor you know, with either the native blocks or the cadence blocks, um, if if you need to use one of them. Um, but I can't really speak to any of those other page builders because I haven't used them. But there oh. may be someone else oh. on the on the meeting that could, uh, like David. I think you were comparing maybe Divi to Cadence last time. Oh, okay, but uh, but if Cadence theme is used, the editor could be uh, compatible with the Divi or. So uh, cool. yes, and. Uh, and also one thing is that they pointed out, I think it was in the Cadence Bootcamp, um, um, Cadence also will work with Elementor. Like I think there's, um, I can't remember, there might be a fork somewhere where you tell it I'm gonna use blocks or I'm gonna use Elementor. Um, yeah, usually that happens when you, when you go to the, when you go to the, the pages screen, um, you know, under that, listing for the page, it'll say edit or edit with Elementor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and Divi has its own, is it is a theme and builder all in one. So I think if you're using Divi, you're, you're kind of completely in the Divi yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, David, uh, even if uh, we use Cadence or any other theme, editor could be used with uh, Divi, can be go together. It can be? It can go together. You can, oh, okay. 
Yeah, you may use any other theme, but oh. go for okay. a DV Builder. Yeah, the Cadence theme, oh, got it. Itself, okay. the okay. Cadence okay. theme itself should, as far as I can tell, be compatible with like any other theme. It's just that if you want the congruity of the whole ecosystem, like the starter templates and all those things, you have to have their blocks at least so that, um, because that's what, what they leverage for the, the, their design library. I wasn't really gonna go too much into this. I, I was gonna kind of mention it, but I guess I'll just jump in a little bit now. So this row, this one of my frustrations coming from a web development background was that, I think I mentioned there were places where I wanted to do more precise formatting or spacing or this or that. And I'm sure I could throw in an HTML block or in the old classic editor, put some HTML in and do a div with some CSS, whatever. But but that's not that sustainable and it becomes this weird one-off in the middle of your otherwise you know, site that's using blocks. Um, so one thing that I've, I've used somewhat so far, but could see someone using a lot is this row layout, which is heavily used by um, the theme and the, or not by the theme, but by their design libraries. So it allows you to put rows in with different columns. You can embed rows and rows. And then you have like the, um, there's kind of a whole structure to it. So there's kind of the, did I pick one? There's kind of the, um, let me see if I can go here. So there's like the row layout and the section, you put content in the section, which can be um, any block or yet another row layout. Um, you got multiple, it would have multiple sections if I had picked a multi-column. Um, does it allow me to change? No, I guess not. But anyway, if I chose a multi-column, it would have multiple sections. Click on the, the row icon right there on the very this far one? left. You go to that one. Let me see if you can see columns over on the right. On the right side, oh, yeah, if you yeah, increase yeah. that. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that at one point. So now I have two sections. And you can set different margins and paddings and backgrounds on, on the row layer, container layer, on the section container layer, and of course, anything you put inside. So I feel it really gives like that level of control if you want it that you could do if you were an HTML coder and you were using the div container you know, sort of pattern of <clears throat> divs with floats or, um, you know, divs arranged in all kinds of wacky ways with CSS and um, with the exact pixel perfect, you know, um, design you wanted. I, I don't do, you know, to that level anymore, but I feel this thing, and this is, this is their sort of notion of a page builder to some extent. Um, and uh, so anyway, I find that very powerful um, and is one of the things I like, I, you know, I'm only leveraging it at not that deeply yet, but I think it's one of the nicer things about the block library. You can also mention passing, you can turn on and off. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember where it is. I think it's in settings cadence. Where is it? Uh, there cadence we go. blocks, there you go. Yeah. So you can activate and deactivate. Now what they said in the boot, what I assumed was that meant the performance load would be better. But what they said in the boot camp is that um, it actually is only whether it's hiding it or showing it in the block editor when you search for blocks and that the code doesn't load unless the blocks on the page. So if that's all true, which I'm assuming it is, then this isn't so much, this is like they said, the use cases you have users that you don't want to give them say the row layout because they could really get in trouble if they don't know what they're doing. Uh, but you can, uh, at least if you don't want the clutter of these ones, you might not use, you can turn them on and off. Um, so let me get back to my outline. What's our stop time, David? Uh, we usually go an hour, but there's no real hard stop. Okay. Yeah, I probably yeah. have 10 yeah. to 15 minutes left. People can hang in. Yeah. Um, you know, so one thing, maybe I was throwing about those, uh, those row layouts that's really nice is they're automatically responsive. So right. when you create yeah. those columns, you know, it's already got that responsive code as opposed to trying to create columns and divs yourself next to each other or whatever. You have to code in like all the different, you know, um, media queries for different screen sizes, et cetera. So all that is built in when you use one of those, um, you know, the row layouts with the columns that they have built in there. Which is yep. And my um, previous theme was responsive and the blocks, but the responsiveness is definitely really well handled in this. And you can... You know, so we go to tablet and I mean, there's a few different breakpoints. One thing I did that you may notice is on mobile, I think my previous theme automatically decreased the size of my logo when I was on mobile, but it was way too big. 
So, but you can see when I go down to mobile, it gets smaller because I actually went into the customization of the header and said, okay, for tablet, I mean, for phone, you're going to set a different, smaller image size. So, Cause there was this bleeding all the way over to the hamburger menu. Um, so, so my goal on this project on the rebrand was to use block, use the native Gutenberg blocks or WordPress blocks wherever I could to make future migrations easier. So, so I'll, I'll, one of the things I did is I used the standard separator block, but I did do some CSS override of um, how it looks. Here's one, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, whereas I had been using the ultimate blocks divider block because it had a little more configurability. Um, but where I could use a standard block, I did because if I ever do another theme migration, the more you're using the custom blocks, the harder it's gonna be, or not theme migration, but if I were to move off the cadence ecosystem, the more you're baked into say the cadence blocks, obviously the harder it's gonna be. Um, let me, I guess I'll show the CSS now because that was one of the things. So I, I only, the my I don't wanna do much CSS, but I just had a few places I wanted to, um, Oh, no, that's the wrong, that's the old site. So let me go back to this. Um, appearance, customize. Ankita's so happy with her switch. She hasn't even played it yet. She's so excited. So um, I don't remember if I can make this bigger, but um, so basically um, what I've overridden is, um, so as I said, for HRs, the native HR uses this WP block separator class or the native separator uh, block. So I've set a background color, a border and a height. Well, it's just uh, for, yeah, I know it's just for Virginia. So it's nothing to do with us. I kept seeing it. I'm like, did I forget to vote? Do we know who's talking? I think we need to know. Uh, right, yeah, for Gavin Newsom, yeah. Is it a, yeah, is I, it I kept a, seeing is it everywhere. It a, a They're Akash? Saying, election, election. I'm like, did I miss something? I, I Virginia, think Akash is the only one okay, muted, so deal. if you're able to mute. All right, there it comes, Mom. Buy your crypto. Get that Cordano. Should be able to mute him in the participants. Uh, and eight, screen. there you go. You put it. Oh, there we go. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right. So I overrode so I could stick with the separator. Um, I there is there are some nice um, the spacer separator and cadence does have some nice features, but if I don't actually need them, then I don't want to use that block. Um, so, yeah. So where was the you know the the, sep the the HR block that cadence has? You used the one that is built into the, the core. Yeah. So why not just use the one from cadence? Because as I said, I want to only use Cadence where there isn't a native alternative. Oh. And Even also, if it includes CSS. <laughs> what was that? Even yeah, if it includes it, writing a little CSS. Yeah, but with the Cadence one, yeah. for the reusability, I probably I would have probably had to create one, configure it, then create a reusable block. So there's kind of a lot of overhead there uh -huh. also. But again, just trying to stay native where I could. I mean, I'm heavily using cadence blocks, but that was just the decision I made. I considered a few options. I would use the cadence one if I wanted to do something fancier with the mount spacing of it and the yeah. um, style align and all that stuff. Um, then uh, at some point, uh, WordPress changed the styling of image captions and they had previously been left aligned and they went centered. So in my old theme a few months, hmm. you know, uh, previous to this redesign, I, uh, I override those to be left. Uh, I have a custom format for the block quote that puts like a line on the left with a you know certain color and three pixels wide and, and all that um, for the the in, you know for the quotes. Um, I think yeah I think what I did is these um, when I was doing the well it's not going to work there. Well when I was doing the when I was um, shrinking things down there were some circumstances where these words were wrapping. So I actually, I think, stuck a custom class on each of the um, info box um, cadence blocks here and put a, um, so, uh, so these classes I prefix with the amusement just to make sure that I'm not stepping over any other library I might use that might have a similar class name. So I put any amusements no wrap to keep these words from, uh, from wrapping. It, was, it wasn't at the phone break, set, at break point. There were like, one of the intermediate breakpoints was doing something really funky where these, it was actually breaking up the word. Um, and, and you didn't, you, you know, you, in the info box, like you, that, that's basically an icon and a title, right? 
I can show the info you, box if that's yeah, because uh, you have you have the um, yeah. font sizes. Okay, uh, where where, do, where am I going here? So this is V three. Yeah, here we go. So we want to go to the home page. Now I can show how that section is built. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so let's go here. So each of these is an info box and in the yep. info box, you can set a link. The link is, you set the link for the entire box, but there's a different setting for whether the link, what is linkable. Like there's an option where there's a learn more thing you can add at the bottom right. that. And then the icon, and it, it bakes in Font Awesome basically. They say we bake in all these SVG things, but they're basically Font Awesome. If you know Font Awesome, you know that's what it's actually using under the hood. So in the media settings, you can use, you can adjust the alignment top left, right. Um, you can um, icon image number or none, and then you can um, you know, choose any of the 81 Font Awesome icons free set, I guess that's included. And then you can set the color and the rollover and all the so I don't have so I don't have let's see which one is this by the way that's eighty one little screens full of icons it's like a thousand icons <laughs> what was that it's that's eighty when it said one of eighty one that's like eighty one little, um, little screens full of icons. I don't think it is actually yeah yeah uh, oh yeah you're right it is eighty one yeah, screens yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah eighty one screens yeah like, it is more than eighty one you're right there's yeah. a variety. Um, and the icon size is settable. Oh yeah, so also device. like um, you make it smaller. Yeah, it's like everything in Cadence, everything is like highly configurable. Um, you can set this animation. Uh, which one am I doing here? I don't know why the border spin hover icon border spin. I don't know why that's working. It might be a different setting I was thinking of. But anyway, there's all kinds of, um, there, there's different, there's more structure to it that I'm not showing, like the learn more, it's not on, right? You could customize that text also, and that's where the link could be if you wanted that to be the link or also be a link. But to show you one other thing of where I'm using that control, um, let me think, or, or I, I, know, I know where it can go. Um, I was going to show this anyway. So this related post is an info box. So I was going to show anyway. I'll just do it now since I'm thinking about it. The few, well, actually, I was on the CSS. So let's finish with that. On the yeah, yeah. So, so, so on that, um, so, so if you go down, go back to the uh, info box where you were editing it. Oh, OK. Now let me figure out which screen that was. Yeah. And then scroll down a little bit. There's container settings and media settings. And then there's title settings. So yeah, so that's an H2. Those are H2s, which right. structurally so, is so, what I wanted. So then you could have said for the mobile, uh, for the tablet size device, make this font a little smaller. Right. And on the I'm not actually doing that, but I'm you can. That's the nice thing about Cadence is it gives you that flexibility to be on many of the settings granular to the uh, you know which breakpoint. Yeah. And you you did it in CSS because the breakpoints weren't. No, I didn't. Um, oh, you mean to keep it from, you know, it was a really keep it from wrapping. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I could have, but it wasn't like, um, whatever the weird thing I was getting was just, uh, I, I, I felt was better solved the way I was doing it, but there probably was a, another solution. Um, so I think I lost my place on the CSS. Uh, I don't think there's too much more to show, but let me just quickly go back there again. Uh, where, okay. Uh, then there's a place I wanted. No, I don't. I'd have to look again. I'd done this on my old theme. I don't remember why I couldn't just use something more that's like a configuration and a block where in this one place I wanted for H2 to use. Um, um, use, or maybe it's not even, I don't remember, it might not even be an H2, but there was somewhere I wanted to new, use new courier, you know, use a courier font on my screenplays page. And I'm not sure why I did that in CSS, but I'd have to revisit that. I the, that the, the advanced heading block gives you the option of selecting a, you yes. can do a different font, right. even like you can set your fonts in the theme so that and if you don't do anything, you'll just use those. But on uh, per headline, and the headline, the tricky thing about the headline, the advanced headline, is it also can do a paragraph. 
Yes, and they <laughs> they said that in the boot camp, and that I yeah. didn't realize. Um, I was so I think if I with all that knowledge now, where I the one place I use this, I you know I I didn't otherwise use the advanced setting um, block, even though it's really cool. Um, but this would be a great use case for it. So um, yes, that is a good call out. Um, and then I wanted my, and this was actually called out like in their support, like just do this in CSS. Um, I wanted my links to be underlined. Um, and then there was some place I was having a margin issue and uh, yeah, some other very specific widget that I needed to style. So not a lot of CSS, just a couple of places I needed to tweak things and maybe a couple of them that I didn't really need. Um, so I'm going to quickly show my reusable blocks. Um, right, what are, I stuck that somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Not that, not this. So I, I have one particular blog page where I have like this pattern of um, multiple of these there for reviews of an audio theater and what were the pluses, what were the minuses. So I created that. This, and I used this using their, this sort of shadow box I created using the row block. And then they have all kinds of nice shadowing and different things you can do, background color. And so for pages where I have a list, I call, I have a box with a list of related posts. And, you know, I use this reusable. Well, it's reusable, but it's more like a template. So the pain is you got to put it in and remember to disconnect it from the reusable connection so that you're not, you now have a broken off instance you can use. And I would forget to do that all the time. But anyway, so I would drop, pull this in on a reusable block, disconnect it from, make it independent of the reusable, and then go in and put my related posts in. Um, and then just a generic shadow box that anything can go into. It's also the row container. Um, that was just a, it was a particular page. The page I was showing you with the players has that pattern quite a bit. And then a subscribe, a, some subscribe a code for a, a YouTube channel that I have. Um, so I'm gonna move on to sort of a, um, a couple speed bumps quickly, the, what the go live was, and then a summary of the, um, sort of before and after on what plugins I'm using and speed comparison page speed tests. So that, and then that's gonna wrap it up. So we're going a little bit long, but if anyone that can stick around, that's what we're gonna talk about. Any questions up to that point? Um, okay, so the couple of speed bumps I had, um, I did have a auto update on the Cadence theme that crashed the site. I couldn't log in. I eventually got in on the recovery mode. And it was probably just a failed update versus a bug in that version. But in the meantime, they had already patched that version. <laughs> like, you know, there was like, it went from 1.6, I might have the numbers wrong, 1.6 to 1.7, and then the next day to 1.8. So I don't think it was like a bug in that interim thing, but I had a backup. I was backing up periodically in Updraft Plus um, just to save my work every day. Um, and, um, uh, and so I was able, I didn't lose anything. I was able just to get past that. I basically said, let me go back to yesterday's state. And then I was able to run the theme update again and it jumped those two versions and worked. Um, and then I did have some complications with going from managed WordPress to standard WordPress, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip over those. Um, so as far as the go live, I basically got this V3-1, um, this three dash one site that we've been looking at to the point where it was ready to pu ready to publish. What I really wanted to do was just repoint my live site to this in WordPress instance. But the problem with that is that in the database, everything is v3-1.amusements.com. So it's gonna get into this, probably I'm sure some of you have great solutions for this, but it was gonna get into this sequencing of repointing the domain and using like a database search and replace plugin to revise all those instances and figure out all that timing of, of how to sequence that. And I didn't wanna get into that headache. So what I ended up doing is creating a new WordPress instance, um, new install, and then um, um, and pointed my live site to it. So for about five minutes, my live site was a vanilla WordPress. 
And then I imported from Word Updraft Plus. So within 10 minutes, you know, 15 at most, probably 10, um, I, I had the new site imported, everything imported perfectly like it always does with Updraft Plus. It does all the database rewrite. And, um, and that's how I ended up going live as opposed to being able to just flip a switch. Um, and so where I am now is <clears throat> the live site amusements.com is, you know, always been the live domain. It's pointed to my, my new live instance. What, what this v.3-1 I've left is a password protected secret URL, just so if I want a sandbox to play in, I have it or want to try something out. Um, at some point it might fall too out of date and I'll have to create a new sandbox. And I have the v2.amusements hidden protect secret protected password subdomain for the old site for a while if I want to reference it. Um, so I, wanted, I thought people might be interested in the speed test comparison. So I thought I would go into that. Any questions before I close up all, most of these tabs? So I was hoping for a, a speed bump and I did get one. And so, I just saved these offline. This was GT metrics before. So even before my old theme, and you know, it was doing pretty well. I also have Google, which I'll show in a second, the page um, insights. Um, actually, let me start with Google because there was a confound I wanted to mention. So desktop Google, my starting point old live site was, you know, wasn't bad, 94, I guess not too shabby, anything, I'm in the green. And then if you look at the mobile, not so good. And I, I do remember like in one of the recent meetups, people saying that's like so hard to get a good score on the mobile. And I'm not using a CDN, you know, there's some things I could do, but um, uh, I am using a, uh, I am using a caching plugin, um, but not a CDN. So I wanted to see, okay, what's, what's the, what's the new site going to be? So I first ran the test on my subdomain. So on my subdomain, I went, and don't get too excited about this because it's not the final comparison, but the final, the subdomain on the desktop, it went from 94 to 100. And then on mobile, it went to 98, which is great, but it's actually not, I'll mention in a second, not, not the final story. So I was all happy about all this, great before and after. And then I realized that when I'd run these V3 on my subdomain, I had this Google site kit disabled. So that's a big library that's not loading. So now I'm going to show you once I re-enabled it uh, on the actual, I ran, so I ran the next test on my actual live site with the new code. So just to be clear, this was on the development site before I pushed it to live. So after I pushed it to live, I ran the test again. And let's see, prod. So desktop, we're at 97 compared to 94. So that did still go up compared to it had gone up to 100 when the Google um, site kit was not enabled. And then on mobile, uh, wait, I think I, that was the wrong thing. That was the wrong one. Hold on. Here we go. So mobile 83. So it's still... We started at 31 without Google Site Kit. It was at 98. Uh, is that mobile? Yeah. Uh, wait. Yeah, mobile. And and the real the real thing with the Site Kit and all the plugins is actually 83. So it's still a huge bump up. And I think it's, there's something ironic about the fact that it's actually Google's library that seems to be the Delta. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that. I wouldn't have known that that was going to bring it down. I mean, it could be some other noise just in, I ran yeah. it a different day and all that, but I yeah. have, I have, get, um, oh, that doesn't matter. Um, but uh, so I did run it like again, I think, you know, a few hours later or the next day and got a similar result. I haven't tried it again just to see if it was some variation and when it was run, but I'll still take the 83 coming up from 31. No doubt. Yeah. I, I, I just did a site recently. I got a hundred on desktop. And it's around 80 on mobile. And I can't quite figure out what is going on there. Why I can't quite get it up to in the 90s on, on mobile. So I'll show the GT but, yeah. uh, metrics one. I won't show the intermediate thing. I'll just show the, the old site versus the new live site. So this, 
they have a um, third page quickly. They have their, I didn't save every tab, but I saved the, just in case anyone cared. I have the, the general, I think it's the performance. No, this is the summary, or maybe this one's the performance. Oh, sorry, I did that out of order. Okay, so the, this is the summary. It gets pretty good scores. This was the old live site. This is the performance tab if anyone wanted to drill into some of the data. And let's go to the new site. Let me just get the other one open too. Oh, no, sorry. That was the wrong thing. Let's get the right thing in there. Summary. And performance. Okay, so 95, 91, 94, 96. So about the same, probably at 95 to 94 as noise and for structure, it went up a bit. And then on the performance, we could dig into the specific metrics. But so as far as GT metrics is concerned, it's kind of in the same ballpark as, as it was before, but it certainly didn't get worse. Um, so. Okay, so let me see. I just had a last couple things to show. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show, um, and I'll drag my outline Google Doc now into the screen, is the plugin comparison. I wanted to decrease as much as I could. I was at 16 before, I'm at 13 now because I subtracted um, one, two, three, four, five, but I added. Uh, Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, I subtracted, I added five, but I, I mean, I subtracted five, but I added two. So I'll just go through quickly what these are, and then you can see what I eliminated. And if anyone says, oh, you can, there's a better solution, or you don't need that plugin, I'd love to hear anything else I could dump. But auto optimize is my caching plugin for my privacy policy and sort of cookie, you know, the banner you get at the bottom, accept cookies, blah, 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 I have a plugin. I got rid of, these are two of the formatting libraries I got rid of, CPO Companion fought awesome. This insert special characters adds um, a little extra menu into the paragraph editor or text editor where you can insert special characters. It's just a little convenience as opposed to pasting it from somewhere else. Uh, so the nice thing about the Google contact, um, I'm sorry, the cadence contact form, let me show that. like my previous form library has reCAPTCHA built in, but I need something for um, my comments and for um, like the forgot password page, you can also add it too. So I have this reCAPTCHA mm -hmm. plugin for that so that uh, people have to enter a captcha for the comments. I'm not using Ask and Matt um, or I don't get enough spam to have like a heavier duty solution. I have the redirection plugin. I don't, Yoast Pro will do the redirection stuff for you, but I don't have Yoast Pro. so. Redirection for move pages from uh, which I, it's also good if you want short vanity URLs, but um, I have some really old legacy stuff I wanted from like 15 years ago. I wanted to redirect to new pages. So I'm using that. The share this, um, you know, this share this stuff at the bottom. That's another plugin. Um, where was I? Uh, got rid of the short codes ultimate site kit I need for the Google Analytics ultimate blocks I got rid of need my backup need my security. This revisions control thing is a thing that allows you instead of having in I don't remember if it's infinite or a large number of drafts like every time you save a post or page before you publish it. You can limit how many are kept in the database to keep your database small so I have I only keep like the last five drafts. I got rid of my form plugin still have Yoast. And then because I went from man managed WordPress to standard, and I don't want everything to just auto update by itself and possibly break the site with a theme update or a plugin update. Uh, this is from the same people that make um, Updraft and it's, it gives you a lot of control over how, uh, how your, your uh, WordPress themes, plugins do or do not update by themselves. And then Cadence Blocks. So that's sort of the comparison. Now, any general questions or if anyone wants to roast or my plugins or tell me which ones I might be able to get rid of. So does Sassy Social Share allow you to put the share buttons 
anywhere on the page or does it always put it at the bottom of the page or do you set it that it goes at the bottom of the uh, page? There are some options like, um, uh, I could well, I could go into it, but I won't spend the time. I think they have some options for that kind of the floating ones on the side. Right. You have some control. There are a lot of these social sharing plugins um, and a lot of them are much more sophisticated. I mean, this one already is like way more configurable than I need, but uh, there are quite a few of these. Some are free, some are paid and they have all kinds of different options for different use cases. I wanted something very simple, but yes, there are a bunch of different options for how, the, how these yeah. icons appear and where they appear. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Is there a uh, technical reason why you're not using the CDN or just preference? Um, well, it's mostly just adding layers of, I avoid layers of complexity where I can. I've used CDNs before I did the, back when Akamai was the first big um, CDN and, and I was doing this stuff professionally. I did, you know, I did, I did Akamai integration like with our, or a big site and network, uh, you know, back in the day. Um, so sure, if I wanted to bump the performance even more, I could use a CDN, but since I'm not a business site and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting good performance scores, it's like, I, I just don't feel the value of adding the complication at this point. I, th I think that, um, and Kristen, you can uh, let me know. Doesn't doesn't rank math do redirection? Do what redirection does? Yes, it does. Yeah. It includes the redirection. I, saw, in, I thought I saw that free, in this presentation I watched today. Is that yeah. in the free version? <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the one that was, I think I saw that um, meet up also. That's the one that's the Yoast competitor, right? Yeah, in Yoast, you have to have the paid version yeah. to get the redirection automatic. Yeah, so I thought about switching after your uh, talk on that, but, um, you know, just switching cost and friction and Yoast is working for me. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I'm, for me, it's like good enough. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. It's like I'm looking for the good enough solution or until there's a compelling reason to change something. If you're and, and, not, you know, if the person who is working on the site and potentially changes a URL, you know what you're doing. You know yeah. how to go in and put it into redirection. It's not that big of a deal. I think it's more important when URLs get changed more often and yeah. maybe the site owner is not the person who built it and they don't know how to you know, put a 301 redirect somewhere else. And so then having the automated redirects is a lot more important in that kind of situation. For sure. And that would not have helped me because my redirects are from when this was an HTML site. So, um, so it would help moving forward, but not with my initial use case. Yeah. The other thing you can do when you're doing an entire site migration, instead of putting it all into like the redirection plugin, it's putting it into HT access file. Um, yes. And I've done that before on other sites that are, um, again, I was on managed WordPress before, so I wouldn't have had access to that. Right. I, I could do that now. And I have done that on other sites I control that are not WordPress. Yeah. So yeah, I could get rid of a, that plugin, but uh, it's yeah. also just for convenience as well. But I use that same redirection plugin sometimes too. It is nice to have when it's just, you know, something you have to do every once in a while. Yeah. It's not worth going to HT access. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's more a set and forget. It's going to be unusual for me to change a URL. Unless yeah. I wanted to do a, a vanity URL, would be, which I've one of my other sites I've done a little more of. Like if I wanted to have a short URL that expands to a long one, um, I've done that as well with redirection. I've, I've used the redirection one too. I mean, can, can you, is there something I'm, let me know if there's something I'm missing. I mean, after a while, can you just uninstall that? Because at some point it's done all the three, 301 redirects and the search engines know the new pages, the new, the new locations. Oh, I wonder. Do you, do you no longer need it at some point? Yeah. There's, like a time, there's a timeline. I want to say like a year or something that, you know, they say that you, do, you can kind of delete those um, redirects from your old site at some point if they're you know already picked up by Google. Right. Okay. Only thing I'd be guideline on it. I want to say it's somewhere around a year, maybe two years at max. Only thing yeah. I'd be concerned with if like, so, I mean, it's unlikely, but if some new search engine came along, oh, but they would not, that wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> they wouldn't, they, they, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have the old <laughs> URL. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I guess, but I, I'll keep it around anyway for uh, maybe for a, 
you know, for possible vanity or whatever else, but yeah, it's possible I could delete it. Or if someone has the URL saved, right? A bookmark, sure. A bookmark, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Or if other sites were linking to your old URLs and you want to make sure that they forward. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. For all those use cases. Right. And that is actually the case with some of my older pages. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. <laughs> Good reason. All right. Well, I do recommend if you're curious about Cadence, it is very, if you have a sandbox, you can play and it is very easy to try out. And, um, and also if you, uh, if you want to, some orientation first, those videos that I put in the chat are, are, uh, you know, those are a great introduction. I have to say, I'm, I'm a little surprised they didn't put the cookie notice thing into the theme by now. I wonder if it's if some of the uh, some of the competitors do. I think I think Bloxy has at least may, may, maybe it's the premium version of Bloxy has has that in it. I think I think I could be wrong, but I think it does. It does have it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm surprised that they did. He mention that in the boot camp. At no, all? no, that didn't that didn't come up. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I didn't see it. I didn't look for it, but I didn't. I didn't see it. I would. Yeah. I. And you haven't seen it in any other pro plugins? Uh, on their pro plugins? Yeah. On the cadence? Yeah. You know, that's a good question. I don't know. They do because they do have a bunch of other plugins. Yeah, could be. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it part of the the blocks anyway in Gutenberg? Like under the widgets, you can also click on it and it will create a little cookie notice. Really? I think it's in widgets or something like that. Oh, okay. Are you talking about the or are you talking about like the GDPR notice? The GDPR notice at the bottom that also, you know, talks about um, yeah. cookies, you know, accept cookies or don't accept it's, and all that. It's un, it's under widgets or something like that in Gutenberg. You go it's kind of hard to find. If you can click on it, it will bring it up somehow. I'd be interested in seeing if we can I find that. You know what? I, think it's the footer. I think if you go to Gutenberg blocks and you go to the footer when you're building the footer, it'll give you that. Um, it'll give you an option for that. And it's a really low, you know, it's not a, it's a very low key, simple. You think it's like one of these widgets that you could drop in? Yeah. It's like in footers or something. I did it so long ago. Yeah, it might be hard to find. Across. Uh, let's see. And it's actually in the Gutenberg blocks, not in the cadence. Oh. Yeah, but this is this is um, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the, uh, this is you know what, what it's called. Uh, might be cookie consent or. GDPR, something like that. I wonder if that's something that's baked into what it, some theme or library you're using. I, I don't see it here. Yeah, that's what I want. Save it an email or something if I come across it. Well, that's all I had. If there are no more questions. Going once. <laughs> Did someone say something? Did someone say something? I, I've got to run, but I'm glad I was able to sit in a little bit tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank Great. You. Good to have you back there, Kristen. All right. Bye. Good to see you. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Randy. That was fantastic. That was really good. Yeah, Hope that was yeah. helpful. Oh, I, 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 for 